In an earlier lecture, we alluded to the fact that there is a relationship between Archimedes' principle and floating objects. In other words, we can use Archimedes' principle to describe or explain exactly why objects float. Now, that's exactly what we're going to explore in this lecture. We're going to find the link between Archimedes' principle and floating objects. So let's begin by recalling what Archimedes' principle is. So according to Archimedes' principle, the object that is submerged into a fluid will displace a volume of fluid that is equal to the volume of that object. So for example, if we take the following object and we submerge it into our fluid, the volume of fluid that the object displaced is equal to the volume of the object itself. And the force of buoyancy, also known as the buoyant force acting on that object, can be calculated by taking the product of the mass of the fluid that the object displaced and the gravitational constant g. So the mass of the fluid is simply the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of fluid displaced, which is equal to the volume of the object. So if we choose volume of the object to be V and the density of the object or the density of the fluid to be a uh, rho fluid, well, we can replace mass of the fluid with rho fluid times the volume of our object. So this equation allows us to calculate the magnitude of our buoyant force. And the buoyant force always points in the opposite direction of the force of gravity. So it points upward along our y-axis when the force of gravity points downward along the y-axis. So that is what Archimedes' principle is. This is the statement that Archimedes' principle gives us. Now let's talk about floating objects. And as one particular object, let's choose wood. So let's suppose we take a log of wood and we submerge that log of wood into our fluid, let's say water. Now if I submerge the log of wood and then I let go, that wood will shoot back up and eventually will come into static equilibrium and will remain on the surface of our liquid. In other words, it will float. So before we let go of the object, or actually at the moment that we let go of the object, let's draw all the forces acting on our log, on the wooden log. Right at the moment of when we let go, the object begins to accelerate upward, and that means according to Newton's second law of motion, the object has a certain acceleration, and that means it has a net force that points upward along the y-axis. Now, there are also two forces acting on the wooden log. We have the force of gravity, which points downward, and we also have the buoyant force, Fb, as described by Archimedes' principle. So that means because the general direction of the wooden log when we let go of that log is upward, that means that this force must be greater than this force. So from our equation from Newton's second law of motion, we know the force net is equal to Fb minus Fg, where we choose Fb to be positive and Fg to be negative. And because this net force points upward in the same direction as the buoyant force, that means the buoyant force must be greater than the force of gravity. And from Archimedes' principle, we know the buoyant force is simply the mass of the fluid displaced by our object, by the wooden log, multiplied by g. And Fg is simply, the force of gravity is simply the mass of that object, our wooden log, multiplied by the gravitational constant g. Now notice that our m of fluid, the mass of the fluid displaced by our object, is equal to, well, it's equal to this quantity, the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume that the log takes up. And likewise, the mass of the object is simply the 
uh, density of that object multiplied by the volume that the wooden log has. Now, notice the G's appear on both sides and the V's appear on both sides. So we can cancel those out. We can divide both sides by the volume times G and we get the following result. So when we take a wooden log and we place that wooden log into a fluid, let's say water, the reason, the actual reason why our wooden log doesn't remain submerged and shoots back up, the reason it floats is because the density of the fluid is greater than the density of the object, which we got from this equation, from this result. So, the reason an object floats is because it is less dense than that fluid. So, now let's examine diagram number two. Let's draw all the forces acting on diagram number two and let's see if we can get any useful equation out of those forces. So, when the object shoots back up onto the surface, eventually that object will come into static equilibrium. In other words, the net force acting on the object along the y-axis will be zero. The net force acting on the object is equal to, so we have the buoyant force pointing upward and the force of gravity pointing downward. So we choose up to be positive, so that means the net force along the y-axis is equal to the buoyant force minus the gravitational force, and that's equal to zero because our object is in static equilibrium. Now, we can bring this side, this uh, value, this force G, to the right side of our equation. And we see that the buoyant force acting on our floating object is equal to the gravitational force acting on that object. So, now, notice that the buoyant force, once again, from this equation, from Archimedes' principle, is given by the following result. So, we take the product of the mass of the fluid displaced by the log and multiplied by g, and that equals mass of the log multiplied by the gravitational constant g. So, what this equation tells us is that when the object floats, the buoyant force acting on that object is equal to the weight of the object. So the buoyant force acting on the object is equal to the weight of our entire object. Now let's continue with our equation. So notice the G's appear on both sides. So we can cross out these G's and we get the following result. So the mass of the fluid displaced by our floating object this mass of this section of the fluid is equal to the entire mass of our log. Now, let's continue. The mass of the fluid is equal to our density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of fluid that is displaced. So, this volume here. So, volume displaced, the volume of fluid displaced multiplied by the density of the fluid is equal to mass of the object, mass of the entire object, which is equal to the density of the object, in this case our log, multiplied by the volume of the entire object. Now notice we can rearrange this equation and we get the following ratio. The ratio of the density of the object to the density of the fluid on which the object is floating on is equal to the volume of fluid displaced by the object divided by the volume of the entire object. So this becomes very useful because this ratio allows us to calculate what percentage or what ratio of the wooden log appears in the water and what ratio appears in the atmosphere outside of the water. So, once again, why exactly do objects float? Well, objects float because they're less dense than the fluid on which they're floating, as we saw in this result. And this comes directly from Archimedes' principle, which gives us this equation, which we use in here to get us this result. And that's exactly how Archimedes' principle and flotation, the concept or the phenomenon of flotation, are connected.
Archimedes' principle is used to explain why objects float. In other words, objects float because they're less dense than the fluid in which they're in.